What are XSS or cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in WordPress? You know, WordPress is a web application um, and it's no different than any other web application, right? Um, uh, the idea is that what you're seeing on the screen is within a web browser. Uh, and so what's happening on the back end is that the web application is generating web pages using HTML, right? Uh, and then we add some JavaScript uh, to make those pages dynamic. Uh, and then most web applications take in user input. Um, so when that input is consumed by the web application, uh, it's usually displayed back to you. So for example, like if you're uh, creating a user profile, you're entering in your first name, your last name and your address and things like that. Um, and then once you save that profile, you can view that profile, right? Or let's say, for example, you're entering in a comment or a product review or something like that, uh, that gets saved uh, within the web application and then some other user can, can, can come back and look at that, right? They can see that uh, within their own context. Uh, and so uh, how we introduced uh, cross-site scripting vulnerability is um, where a user is providing some sort of input uh, and that input is actually a uh, script, JavaScript, right? Or an HTML tag, like the script tags with JavaScript in between that tag, right? Uh, and so when the, the web application consumes that information and displays it back to the user, uh, it's not uh, interpreting it as text to display to the user, but rather it's interpreting it as code. So the web browser will actually interpret that line as it's generating the HTML, it will interpret that line as code and execute that code. And so where this becomes a problem is uh, when it is executed in the context of a user that has higher privileges, right? So let's say you submit that comment uh, that gets saved, uh, an administrator views that comment, uh, that script executes. Uh, and specifically in WordPress, when that script executes, uh, you can have it, for example, uh, create an administrative user. So that's that's where it becomes a problem. Then you've uh, basically compromised the site because when that script executes, uh, that script is provided by the threat actor. Uh, and so the values like the username and password within that script is what the threat actor has selected. So they know the username and password you know, the administrator is is viewing that comment, that script is executing, uh, and then all of a sudden you have a new account on your WordPress instance. And that, that account lets them do anything they want to your website. And it all came from an innocent looking form or something like that on the, on the website. Right, absolutely. That's pretty crazy. So, what makes XSS vulnerabilities in WordPress a great bug bounty target for beginners? So, you know, as a WordPress plugin or theme developer, um, when you're when you're creating code for your plugin or theme, uh, you know, you're you're talking about hundreds of thousands of lines of code, uh, and it's often difficult to ensure that every single input is sanitized and every single output is escaped. Right? Uh, oftentimes, you'll see input sanitization and output escaping functions being used by the developer, but um, maybe like one's missed, right? One mm -hmm. or two is missed somewhere along the line, right? Uh, or some other, maybe you have multiple developers, right? And they have different coding styles uh, and one comes in and does an update and, you know, fails to sanitize like an output or something like that. Um, so yeah, like I mean, they there are just so many. And when we started our bug bounty program, um, you know, we actually got a, a, a lot of cross-site scripting submissions. Um, uh, some of which were using techniques that you know we hadn't seen before, right? Um, or we ha hadn't investigated ourselves. So so it just goes to show that there are just so many different ways of getting that input in, uh, and you know triggering that cross-site scripting vulnerability. Yeah, it's such a small little mistake you can make on the, the programming side that can have big consequences. And it totally makes sense what you said. You know, it is a best practice to sanitize input, but 
you know, when you have a, a team working on code and you have all these different developers with their own styles, it's easy to see that something might get missed every once in a while. Right. It's, it's you know, it's said that if you write code, um, you will at some point introduce a vulnerability. It's just inevitable. Let's say I just signed up to the WordFence bug bounty program, which if you're watching this video, you should do that if you haven't already signed up. Um, and you had to coach me to find my first XSS bug as quickly as possible. What steps would we take? Well, um, so first I'd make sure that you, um, you know, you had a test environment. Uh, so if you go on to our Discord channel, uh, you can download a Docker configuration and you can get that going pretty quickly on your local machine. Um, and then after that, I think what I do is route you to the WordFence blog. Uh, and there are just a bunch of vulnerability analyses and we pick a cross-site scripting uh, vulnerability analysis and we would just walk through that. So we would go and we would actually download that old vulnerable plugin. We would install it on your test instance and then we would walk through that logic, right? We would open up our IDE or integrated development environment like Visual Studio Code. Uh, and we would we would walk through, you know, why does this cross-site scripting vulnerability exist, right? And, and if you look at my blog post, we'll go through what we call sources and sinks uh, and the data flows start from like the input, like where did the input in uh, and what different functions that input goes through. Uh, and then we'll take a look at like the final output of where that uh, input gets Paste it, or paste it into or, or inject it into the, the DOM uh, or the page that the user is viewing uh, and then being executed. So I think that's, the, that's probably the, the first thing that I would do because uh, if you are able to take an existing vulnerability, right, look at the analysis and understand what is happening and then exploit it yourself, like create your own proof of concept walk through and see it happen yourself and then you do that a few times it's going to make it a lot easier to find vulnerabilities that totally makes sense that's a really great methodology to uh learning how these vulnerabilities work and to be able to recognize them out in the wild when you're doing your own uh searching for bugs as part of our bug bounty program so right. What are some common pitfalls or wastes of time when people are looking for XSS vulnerabilities, especially in WordPress? I wouldn't necessarily call anything a waste of time, um, but uh, I will say that, um, so sometimes we get submissions for uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that can only be exploited by an editor level or an admin level user. Um, and then, Sometimes uh, people don't realize that editors and administrators have the unfiltered HTML capability. So that means that, you know, if you're an editor user or if you're an administrative user, uh, you can actually um, put in HTML into inputs uh, in WordPress by default, uh, which means that you can execute JavaScript. So, you know, it's, 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 already, it's, it's already considered acceptable for editor level users and administrator level users to do that. Uh, where that isn't true is if the unfiltered HTML capability is disabled. So you can actually go into your wp-config.php. Uh, you can put in a directive that disables uh, unfiltered HTML. Uh, and then you can see if a plugin or theme introduces a cross-site scripting vulnerability for an editor or administrator when that capability is disabled. So those are considered legit. But we have seen so many submissions of editor level or administrator level uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities where the researcher is not disabling unfiltered HTML and they don't realize that the editor uh, and administrator can actually execute that code and that's okay and that's considered acceptable. So I, I would say like that uh, is a waste of time. And also know that, um, from our data, we don't see that these vulnerabilities are being exploited anyway. Um, they're not being exploited by threat actors. Uh, you know, usually when it comes to cross-site scripting vulnerability, you're looking for like um, an unauthenticated stored cross-site scripting vulnerability, or you're looking for like a subscriber level uh, and above, right? So, um, 
you usually in a, in a WordPress instance, you might have like subscriber level users. It's pretty common, right? So if you have a cross-site stripping vulnerability that can be exploited by a subscriber level user, uh, that's considered pretty severe. Same with unauthenticated. And then when you start getting into contributor and it's like, mm, you know, probably not going to be exploited by a threat actor. Uh, so it's so it's a value decreases significantly from like a, from a bounty perspective and in terms of like you know what you're doing to protect the wordpress community uh definitely i mean if you find them definitely submit them they're cve worthy they are vulnerabilities uh and if you consider all of the um the authentication roles um if you're truly a, a beginner like if you're brand new um you know, definitely, definitely look at the editor administrator plus uh, cross site scripting vulnerabilities. Just make sure you um, enable or sorry, disable unfiltered HTML uh, for those users. So you're making, so you're finding an actual vulnerability uh, that you can submit. But I think that I think that new users, uh, sorry, new researchers, um, they're gonna they're just gonna have a broader scope if if uh, we allow, you know, that, that full range of roles. Uh, but I'd say if you're going to focus on anything, look for unauthenticated, uh, and subscriber level that stripping vulnerabilities. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And, and like you said, there's not necessarily a waste of time if you're a beginner, because everything gets you more exposure to how everything works and, you know, building your skills. But in the context of bug bounty, you have to be aware of, you know, the actual impact of the vulnerabilities. And um, that's what bug bounty programs reward is, uh, you know, people discovering vulnerabilities that could are more uh, potentially impactful. So basically, yeah, so thanks so much for explaining all of that, Alex. And um, I'm pretty excited to get to learn more about XSS myself um even though i'm not a threat researcher so so uh what should my next steps be in getting deeper into this and learning more about xss vulnerabilities and uh how to find bugs for the word fence bug bounty program yeah I, I think the best thing that you can do is uh like i mentioned um you know hit up our blog um take a look at some of those cross head scripting vulnerability analyses and um, you know, walk through them yourself. Um, and then really, I, I would say that the next thing that you could do is try to find one, you know, like, uh, you can, I, I always say like, it, it just, you know, grab your laptop, sit on the couch, um, you know, put on some headphones or, you know, if you're good at concentrating, like turn on Netflix or something like that <laughs> in the background, it's, I mean, it's literally like solving a puzzle, right. Mm. Uh, it, you know, don't put down the wordle put down the crossword puzzle and just open up, you know, a piece of plugin or theme code from WordPress and then just start walking through the code. Just look at it, right? Uh, go read the blog post that we just posted on finding cross-site scripting vulnerabilities uh, and find those sources, find those sinks, you know, look at the data flow, see if you can find something. I think that's the, the best way to do it. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. So. As you, as you mentioned, um, there's going to be links in the description below this video if you're watching on YouTube to go to that blog post that was actually written by Alex. That is a step-by-step -step guide to finding cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in WordPress.